this is Season 2, Episode 32 of the Out of the Minds Podcast. I'm Sean Oakley. And I'm Sam Cooper. And boy, did the Tin Nationals not go the way I thought it would. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's let's jump straight into that, shall we? Um, we obviously had <clears throat> Cornish Nationals over the, over the weekend. It's great. We had 22 players from... Around the country, uh, coming to visit us, which is always nice. Um, I won't go into too much detail. Um, I made top four, um, which I'm quite happy with. Um, I, uh, yeah, I played um, Chris Burnett in in the top four. Uh, we managed to fight a twelve twelve draw at the end and lost to a road roll. And, oof. Well, I mean. You can't complain. I mean, that's what it is, right? A, a, a <laughs> yeah. world championship was decided on a road roll, right? So, yeah. you know. And and for all it kind of sucks, like at some point you have to decide to draw somehow, right? Yeah. yeah. And it was a good game, which is the important thing, you know. Um, we both flew yeah. very well, and yeah, the, the scoreline reflected that. Um, but enough about me. How did you get on, Sam? So, uh, I... Uh... Made the finals, um, and I won the finals with my droid swarm. And I'm not gonna lie, based on how the uh, <laughs> based on how my day started, that was absolutely not how I thought that was gonna go. Considering I started off with a loss. I mean, uh, perfect submarine. Yeah, perfect submarine. I snuck into. I snuck in at eighth. With a three and two record uh, on day one. You you want uh, you want to know the really funny thing? Actually, and I've only just thought about this. Is like Nikki was undecided whether she's going to do a top four or a top eight because top four was kind of what the numbers call for. But we were like, well, you're doing three rounds of the side event anyway. We might as well do a top eight. And I literally said to him, it means someone who sneaks in at three and two has a chance of going the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Lo and behold, you did. Lo and behold, I did. Um, but yeah, no, I, it was a really interesting day. I had some excellent games. Uh, I I lost the, the droid off to Andy Cameron. Uh, and oh, boy, did I make mistakes there. And Andy Cameron rightfully obliterated me. With that one, uh, and I had some very, very, very tight wins. Uh, but no, okay. I in the top eight, I was able to edge out Josh Hall's first order. Um, with I, I don't know. It's one of those interesting things. Like I literally feel like I don't think I played badly, but I feel like had dice been average, I probably wouldn't have made it past top eight. Everyone needs dice luck to. Yeah. Do a run at a tournament though. Um because I mean yeah, Josh like Josh's silencer rolled had I think had like one health left, was rolling four greens. I had one hit, he rolled four blanks, and that, that's how Blackout died. Yeesh. But it happens. Uh and then it happens. So Edge past Josh Hall in a very tight game. It was like twenty two twenty. It was in the score flipped who was gonna win, flipped but twice in the last round. Uh, and then in my top four against Steve Burnett of all people, uh, which was excellent to see, flying his scum um, gauntlet salad with Manaru and Talon Bane and Dalen Oberos, uh, I ended up just barely winning in the final turn um, by killing Talon Bane Cobra to just sneak away a little victory. And in the finals, I met Chris Burnett with his resistance lot. Yeah. And that's I mean, what we're going to be looking at today. Quite frankly, it's about time you won something. Look, Big. If like, I can't if I can't do well when droid swarms are on top, then I can't no, but, do, I I I likely can't do well um what what I meant was you're a good enough player. You've always been skirting there or thereabouts. And it's nice to see you just get over the line this time. Yeah. But yeah, we are going to look at the final. Um uh, which fire, uh, Firecast very kindly came down, Pond came down and streamed for us over the weekend, which is great. Um, 
We don't really need to run through your list, do we? Because yeah, I mean, I, I guess we can for posterity. Uh, I've got two Geonosian prototypes. One has Kraken and energy shells. One has sync laser cannons and energy shells. I've then got five vultures, all with energy shell charges. I've got DFS three eleven, two Howard Child prototypes, and two Trade Federation drones. And then I've got Cad Bane with proton cannons, probe droids, the title, and engine upgrade. Yes. Um, I'll do a quick. Chris's list, uh, it's Flying Resistance, has brought Commander Poe with Heroic and a Heavy Laser Cannon. Um, I like Commander Poe at five. That's a nice little pocket ace. Yeah. Uh, Ray with almost a standard Ray build. Uh, you've got Heroic Rose Finn, the title, uh, and then Compassion, because I guess there was a point left. Uh, Zori Bliss in the Y Wing with Plasma's wartime loadout, R4, and dorsal turret. And Pamich Nero Good in the Resistance Transport with Leia Organa and Synced Laser Cannons. And uh, a quick note on that anyone who doesn't know what the Leia crew in Resistance does, basically, spend a force any of your ships anywhere on the board can do, well, say any one of your ships, um, can do a, uh, it decreases the difficulty of a manoeuvre, it's not even do a red. So, reds become white, blues become, uh, sorry, whites become blue. Ray having a blue three bank is is yeah. obscene. <clears throat> um, blue sloop on Ray, blue 4k on Poe, blue, white. like, sorry, white, yeah. white 4k, white... Uh, sloop white talon roll on Poe. Like it's there's a lot of uh, good stuff it can do. Which, which funnily is, I think the the key difference. I ironically played Chris during Swiss and won. Um, and the main difference between that is the first game I gunned for the um, transport because once that's out of the way, a Chris is down to three ships. B the shenanigans are gone. Yeah. Um, and I didn't quite do that, or I did, but in a delayed sense in our um, in our top four, and I think that was one of the contributing factors. Because take the shenanigans away, they're still great ships, but it just brings them down a little <laughs> bit. But you guys are playing Assault at the Satellite Array. Yes. Uh, and... I think I'm. I think I am more happy with this than Chris is. Yeah, I mean, you've got the eight ships, but he's yeah. got a large base. Yeah, but I think. I mean, we'll get to the setup. Like, I'm happy for there to be, especially especially because I've got rocks and droids. I'm relatively happy if I can get droids sat on rocks near objectives, because then that forces the fight to me. Yeah, which is kind of what I want. I want him to be coming in. Like straight up, essentially. Yeah. Um, but on the objectives, I believe, uh, I believe I win first player on setup. Yep, yeah, looks like it. Um, because I the first objective that is placed is I place my objective. Uh, I think it's just over range two on the dead center on my side. Because the, the obvious idea being, I can stick a rock near it, I can stick a, dro stick a droid on it. And also, it's just one that's just in the middle, and depending on where Chris places his on my side, it'll decide where the majority of the objectives have gone. Yeah. Chris then places his home objective on his right-hand side, in about the centre of like that little quadrant. He's like, just, just, a, just over range two, um, in like the centre of his right, hand, right, half, right half of the board. Uh, so I then place uh, my objective on Chris's side on the, on on his left hand. I basically place it again, a list, a, a basically almost exactly at range three near the center of Chris's half of the board. Because in my mind, if he wants to sit a ship back to hold an objective, fine. His ships cost more than mine, and I would happily take on uh, eight versus three. Yeah. Uh, even if it is just Pamich sitting back, because Pamich's um, like main main component is Leia, so obviously that ca she can afford to sit back. But then now there are two objectives on Chris's side that aren't like near the center, and 
depending on where Chris places his last objective, there's going to be one that's on its own. Yeah, and to be fair, Pavich with the sync laser cannons is still a three dice gun. Yeah. So if you take that out of the equation, that's definitely a win. Yeah. So Chris basically places his as far up my board edge as possible, as close to his as possible, almost exactly at range two of the centre on my left hand side, Chris's right. So there's a small triangle on um, my left, Chris's right. Uh, of objectives so i'm like okay well i know exactly where my first rock is going because the last thing i want is for ray to be able to just sit in the middle of all three of those objectives and force me to have literally six ships around her to tie the objectives yeah uh so i place a rock in between all three of those objectives uh, one of my big pride of mandalore rocks and i'm basically trying to make it so that if ray does want to contest all of them she's sitting on a rock and it's one of those things where, like, if Chris decides to do that, he probably gets some points, but you know what? Ray's not shooting. Yeah, yeah. And he, Chris cannot afford to have yeah. Ray not shooting. Yeah, and I can't remember the exact order of the other objectives, um, but I believe Chris next places a gas cloud, basically almost on top of my home objective, making it very hard for me to put a rock near it, so I can't, I can't really leave some behind. Uh, and then I basically proceed to place um, asteroids it is in between the sets of objectives as possible. So Ray, um, if Ray wants to contest two, she's sitting on a rock. Like, I can't stop Ray from contesting one objective, but I can make it tricky for her to contest two. Yeah, definitely. And we basically end up with there are four asteroids on Chris's half of the board, all like r relatively close to each other in between the objectives. Now it's it's quite interesting because you you know you said that you're happy to sit on a rock and let Chris come to yeah. you. But you can't really do that because they're all on Chris's side. Yeah. Because So the interesting thing is because, obviously, after after I placed my um, second rock in between objectives, Chris then placed his gas cloud basically next to the objective on my left. And I was like, okay, I can't realistically put a rock um, in there without get basically getting in the way of my non-vulture ships. So I thought, okay, I will just scatter them across Chris's side and make it so that he has to come through lanes um, to avoid it. And if I ever get there, I, there are plenty of places I can go and sit on a rock and just sit near one of his home objectives. Because if the fight happens near the cluster of three or four on my left, then there's an objective on the right that's just near a rock. And yeah. a vulture can go, oh, happy days. Happy day, yeah. Um, but my main goal was, okay, make it so there's space on one side, uh, and make it so there's a cluster of uh, rocks near the objectives. Because most of the objectives are basically on Chris's side of the board, I was like, okay, I would quite like to be up there. Yeah. Uh, and also what these rocks have done is made it so that when Chris wants to come into the center, he has to go through relatively narrow lanes. And I have a proton cannon that's very good at punishing that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. When it comes to setup, I do. How do I? An interesting take on my usual strategy. Because normally I've set up my entire swarm facing along my board edge, basically set up it roughly in a corner so they can run out into the middle, turn into the center, and then take locks from the probe droids. But this time, that's not quite going to work because the open space I'd quite like to turn into is a million miles away from the objectives. Yeah. So I end up setting up so like the back of my formation of like seven droids. Like basically, I have two um, rows of two facing along my board edge, um, and I set up so that the back of my droids is roughly on the center line, and then going forward, so that I can't actually do my yeet forwards really like not at speed because i'll go off the board edge but what i can do is i can just turn in um there are enough gaps between the gas clouds or so i thought at the time that i can happily turn in rearrange my formation depending on where chris goes uh and then i can start fighting over the objectives on chris's half of the board uh then Pamich goes down, and Pamich goes down on Chris's right-hand side, basically setting up so they can just go forward and claim an objective. But interestingly, setting up relatively opposite my swarm. So yeah. like, if I turn in and go straight, I'm going to be shooting Pam. 
which I thought was interesting because I thought that considering where the rest of my list is, Pamich might want to set up on the left. Yeah, I probably would have set up on the left, but I think I so think the Cad flip. Goes sorry, the thing yeah. the flip side of that is you want Pamich near Zori to basically Zori, feed yeah. Zori the focus to get her double modded on her plasmas. Yeah. And so what that told me is a, Chris is planning on fighting me, and b, Zori's going to be within one of Pam. Yeah. So that's usually how Chris flies Zori and Pam. Uh, so then I set up Cad Bane, and I set up Cad as I normally do, facing into the board. He's at the back of my formation, except he's slightly out um, to the right because I realise I can't quite set up in line with my vultures without going over a gas cloud. But he basically set up so he can fly towards the centre, launch probe droids give my vultures and gunships locks, and then he can be annoying and get in the way and fire a proton cannon. Yeah. Then the rest... That's my entire list down. The rest of Chris's list goes down. Zori sets up just to the left of Pam and slightly ahead, aiming in between a pair of rocks and basically in range for Pam to move forward, focus. Zori gets a focus. Ray sets up on the left, basically, so she's going to sweep in behind my formation and be on the flank. And Poe sets up almost directly opposite Cad, except not not bullseye opposite. So he's basically saying, I won't fire the HLC, but you won't fire the proton cannon. And I think that's a pretty decent... That's, that's just a better trade for Chris. Yeah. Because I'm quite happy to trade HLC into proton cannon, yeah, if yeah. I'm brutally honest. Yeah, with dead to rights as well, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, funnily enough, though, I think this is just because I played Mark Packer Hughes's Poe, who had proton torpedoes yesterday. I don't know why, but I was dead certain that Poe had proton torpedoes, and that that meant absolutely no way Cad can go fast. Because I was afraid of a proton torpedo that absolutely does not exist. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. It still works out, but I mean, taking a HLC would be bad anyway. And if Ray comes fast, I'd be taking both Ray and Poe shooting, and that would lead to a very quickly dead Cad. Yeah. Uh, but I should mention it. I the reason I go slow with Cad in a second is because I'm afraid of a proton torpedo that absolutely does not exist. Okay. Well, let's jump into it then. Let's jump into it. So basically, my entire droid swarm does a three hard to the right and calculates. Because uh, effectively what that has done is it's sort of like the droid swarm's done slightly over a one straight. Yeah. Which I think is fine. Like, I obviously couldn't... Ye I This is one of those games where I don't think pro droids are going to get much value unless Chris really slow rolls. Um, but at the same time... I I don't I didn't think I could afford to take a turn out to give Ray and Poe time to really get into the thick of it. So I'm turning in, calculating. I'm ho if Chris has gone slow, excellent. I can go slow next turn. Take take locks, prepare the shells. If Chris goes fast, then we fight very quickly, and I should out trade because the way I've gone is Ray would be very hard pressed to actually get in there very quickly. Yeah. Am I think is this is doing a two straight? Yep, yeah, looks like it focuses uh no not focuses coordinates and gives poe a boost see I'd be, I'd be getting nervous at that point so so i was quite nervous cad then does a two straight because i still want to aim towards the center i just thought okay two straight from the back he shouldn't be able to reach me and i just focus zori then does a two straight and focuses Ray um, does a four straight. You, I, th I think this, I believe this was using layer. Um, layer to make it white. Yeah, looks like it. And then boosts straight. Uh, so can, we, can we catch? Yeah, can we catch Cad before the swarm? Basically, yeah. Poe does a four straight. Wings closed. And basically, Chris doesn't think he's in range of Cad. And obviously can't boost. So he barrel rolls to the right and basically does the Poe thing for a focus. And he barrel rolls forward. Uh, it probably doesn't Poe because they have a natural focus. Oh, do they have a natural barrel yeah. roll to focus? I, I, yeah. I, okay, then. Yeah. So checks arc. Poe doesn't have my droid swarm, which means no health at HLC. And Ray has a range three into CAD. 
Now, here's the thing with um, this dice cam is I didn't realize that the corners of the dice cam were not on the screen. Oh, fair. So whenever I rolled my dice, I then moved them into the corner to make room for Chris's. So you're going to have to get quick snapshots of my dice to work out what oh, happened. Oh, it's fine. We'll <laughs> just work out. Uh, don't... Also, Chris doesn't like that dice thing anyway, yeah. so it just rolls into his own. But it looks yeah, like... He... I think Cad took a damage, if I remember rightly. I don't... Where is Cad? The Cad's not on the screen. The Cad oh, is off well. the screen. Oh, well, Thanks. that's that's not helpful. Um, yeah, okay. I, be- I believe Cad took one damage and now has a target lock on him, but I can't remember exactly. And I'm, ass- Which I'm assuming did fine. nothing back to Ray for the... I did nothing back to Ray. I launch a probe droid a three bank out to the, towards the center. I don't think it's going to be wholly relevant. I think we're too close and we're fighting. And I would like to point out, in my opinion, because I know I win this game, I think Poe's barrel roll might be one of the reasons Chris loses. Because now Poe is stressed. Admittedly, Leia exists, so there are more options. But it's functionally right in front of me. Yeah, like, where do you go from there with Poe? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'll be interested to see what Chris does. But I'd I'd be tempted just to one straight, certainly with the block of droids in front of him. Yeah, so I there are there are basically I think there are two barrel rolls that end up costing Chris the game. I think, and I whilst I think the idea was sound, I'm not sure the posit the benefits because if obviously if Chris has had a HLC shot into the vulture, maybe the vulture dies. But I also don't think Poe being there is conducive to Poe living. Yeah. Um, Unless he thinks he can just turn Ray in and eat yeah. enough damage through, which is always a possibility with vultures. Absolutely. So uh, I shift my probe droid up in the system phase just to get it out of the way, basically, and my entire droid swarm moves in. So DFS three eleven because I remember that one. He basically does a, I believe that is a three or four straight, and I, think I calculate. It's a four. And then I basically start banking my vultures in to look at where either Poe might bump, maybe, or where Zori's coming in. Uh, I also yeet a vulture over the gas cloud. And I know Pond on the stream said, like, I'm surprised he didn't, I surprised Sam didn't barrel roll on his first move to try and avoid the gas cloud. I'm undecided on whether I should have or not, but this going through the gas cloud I thought was fine because I kept to calculate with Kraken, I can go through the gas cloud, I can still fire the shell basically no matter what I roll on the gas cloud and I do get ionised. Um, and because my vulture has a calculate already, the like, losing the action is not the end of the world. Correct me if I'm um, wrong, you can't ion onto a rock, can you? Because you... you can ion onto the rock because you are executing a manoeuvre. I thought ion stopped you... Oh, I also stops you from staying onto the rock. You can't. You could literally physically not stay on the rock. And it and ion stops reveal dial stuff, doesn't it? Yes, but it's which not is why a... you. Which is why if you are ionized on a rock, you will automatically f- roll off. Yeah. But the struts just. Re- if I execute the ion maneuver, I've executed a maneuver, so I can flip the struts into land on the rock. Ah, uh, okay. That's that's good to know. Uh, and here's my silly, I two bank my furthest leftmost vulture straight onto that same cloud, because I, you know when you're just positive it'll fit? It'll fit. I mean, it looks close, like, there's, yeah, there's a it, chunk it of the corner on, but... Yeah. Uh, and I do, he's the only one that, like, lands on anything, he just lands on the cloud, he takes a strain, and no consequence, and basically everyone else two banks in, uh, the gunships take locks on Poe, everyone else calculates if they can, because I'm trying to catch Poe in front of the majority of the swarm, if I possibly. I mean, can. that looks like a pretty good kill box. Yeah. Like I kind of hope you. Pam. F- folk- oh, sorry. Do- yeah. Do Pam, but then. Yeah, Pam does another two straight and focuses, passing a focus over to Zori. Uh, and Cad does. I believe this is a four straight. I'm really hoping you focus boost left here. And I focus boost to the left. Nice. Because now I'm lining... A, I've blocked off the one bank from Poe, and now I've lined up a proton cannon down the gap where three of Chris's ships are currently sitting. Yeah. And I think you've probably blocked off the um, the two hard. Yeah. As well. I am kind of curious whether the 4k or a full straight just slots behind that vulture, but... I believe it does. 
Uh, Zori does a two straight and takes a target lock action, and Chris ums and ahs on who to target lock. I basically point out, like, well, this guy's the Kraken carrier, this guy's not carrying Kraken, and he ends up locking the non-Kraken Geonosian prototype. Oh, I think that's a mistake. Well, I, I know why. It's because he's trying to basically double t- double up on the same ship, and he's going to get a range one-shot from Ray in a sec. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, because Ray is doing a two-bank, which clears the stress. Uh, it's not range one shot, right? And then Ray moves the target lock onto the Geonosian prototype, and Poe does a three bank, layering it to make it easier. Uh, and remember where I said there are two barrel rolls that uh, lose Chris oh, the game? Here okay. is the second one. He barrel rolls in, basically, I believe he oh. focus barrels in closer, trying to line up the shot onto the Geonosian prototype. But to, to be fair, also takes him out of one of the droids. Arc, so that's one less shell yes. coming in. Um, that is also true. However, Poe does not have the shot. I don't know. I mean, I'd still yeah. be tempted. All right, you've gone range one into the. the so the, the H- only reason I say I think this might lose in the game is because to dodge that shot, dodge the shell shot, he could also have just boosted. Yeah, fair, fair. Yeah. Um, because uh, cause basically, functionally, what he's done is yes, he's dodged the shot, but he also and he wasn't getting a shot anyway. But he now just doesn't have a shot. Yeah, okay. And he's stressed. That's fair. Um, but anyway, we get to the shooting. Ray pumps four damage into the Geonosian prototype, and uh, Zori fires a plasma torp and punch four, punches four damage into the Geonosian prototype. So I lose my gunship. Ouch. Yeah, just straight up lose the gunship. Uh, Cad Bane trigger. I take a target lock onto Zori Bliss. Oh, I wonder where that proton cannon's going. Uh, yeah, and then the yeah, I fire the proton cannon. It's sorry, I target. I have a target lock uh, and proton cannon ability. I think I don't even spend the focus, and I can't remember how much damage I put into Zori. I think uh, it's just like three. That looks like she. Yeah, yeah, three shields looks like it's gone down yeah. because it's wartime low power. Uh, Pam then shoots into my ionized and strained vulture. Uh, and I take two damage, I believe, of, of the course of this. So I've got a one health yeah. vulture. Uh, my gunship then, my Kraken carrier fires a shell into Zori because the way I see it, yeah, I could fire into Poe, um, but I've got more shots into Zori at this point, and I'd rather remove a ship. So yeah, basically, yeah, that's fair. The rest of this turn is hody hody, shoot into Zori. Um, and I believe three to four shells later. Um, Zori is dead. And I also plink off a shield off of Ray with a rand- with the, the long bomb energy... No, I plink a shield off of Poe with, with the long bomb energy shell through a gas cloud. Uh, Two shields off Poe, even. Yeah, we'll just... Uh... <laughs> Let's get through this. Lot- there- lots of crits are going down. It's energy shells, and yeah. I'm rolling quite hot, yeah. um, unfortunately, for Chris. And Zori goes down. I take two shields off Poe. And Pam loses a shield as well from my ionized vulture. But with um, objective points, it looks like it's only 6 5 in your favor. Yes, because uh, Ray and Poe, I believe, believe Poe has my home objective. I have the center, I have the left one, and Pam has um, Chris's home objective. So we end up going 2 2 in objectives. I've lost a three point and Chris has lost a four point. So yeah. it's still close. And again, Ray is untouched and on my flank. And that is a concern. But I also have a very clear target to go for next. Uh, and that would be Pam. Yeah. I suppose the flip side is you've lost a three point and Chris has lost a four point. But you've lost an eighth of your list and he's lost a quarter. Yes. And like, yes, it, you know, the arguments are in both your cases, it's probably not the most important. But but it's still, like, now Chris only gets to shoot three times rather than four. Yeah. And we just skip through the dials. I believe I basically do a couple, basically a couple of turns trying to get sh- um, ships in the way of Ray and Poe. Uh, DFS 311 is basically... he. He, he yeets off to grab the home objective. He basically three hards to the right past Cad Bane, barrel rolls and calculates. He's going for Chris's um, far side objective. Uh, 
Uh, my ionized vulture goes onto the rock and does no action because he was ionized. I hard turn one of the vultures in the center next to Poe and calculate. The vulture on the um, gas cloud just does a two straight and calculates. Uh, my far left vulture who shot a shell into Ray does he has kept a calculate from last round and so just two banks. Um, keeping his stress and just lands on objective. My gunship does a one straight, flips the stabilizers and calculates. Because I'm fully expecting to want to sideslip next turn. Pam does a one reverse. Uh, one reverse bank, I believe, to the left, getting basically trying to dodge the vultures. And that looks like no layer charge. And to doesn't me. layer because he's uh, going to be doing that later. Um, Cad does a three straight. And I just regular boost. No link to action, because I don't want to be stressed next turn. And yeah, I know how Cad is going to get mods. Something's going to die. BFS311 has a calculate and sod all to do with it, because he's going that's towards a, my ba that back objective and can just pass it to Cad. So I do a regular white boost. I line the bullseye <laughs> up onto Pam. doesn't really matter, because Pam has no green token, <laughs> but the, the, the idea is there. Then Ray does a three sloop. Takes a stress, uh, and I can't and doesn't do an action. Then Poe does a talon roll la and layers it to white. So now Poe is basically facing back the same way, still stressed, but has a shot. Opens his wings as well. Uh, at the start of engagement, DFS three eleven passes a calculate to Cad Bane, and then Poe basically starts basically shoots into my vulture that's right in front of him. And I think it deals no damage? very little damage. I mean, he had no mods, but that's unfortunate. Yeah. And then Ray shoots into the vulture, obstructed. I spend a calculate to live. I feel like I'm definitely have taken damage at this point. I, I'm positive I've taken damage. Okay, overlay must not be updated. We'll get to that. Uh, I can't, I don't know what we're rolling here. I feel like yeah, I'm sorry. Of what we're it's rolling happening. I know. It's Cad sh basically Cad shoots Pam. The Gian Ocean shoots um, Poe, and some a load of vultures also shoot Pam, and one vulture shoots Poe, uh, which we'll strips see. off Poe's shield. Pam's lost her shields as well. We'll skip to the end and see what the damage is. This just looks like your droids going in. Yeah, so Poe's down to two, thanks to the gunship and that vulture that lived. That's... And I guess he didn't take any damage. I thought, he, I thought he did. I thought that vulture got quite low, but no one's put damage onto the overlay yet. I don't see a whole lot of damage cards on your side either, so... The only reason I'm sure is because I can see a damage card on a Howard Child prototype, and that's definitely what is in front of Poe. Is it? Yes. Fair enough. Because so you can tell the Trade Federation drones because they're the brown vultures, and the two Howard Charles and DFS are the separatist coloured vultures. And I know DFS is the one going to the objective because he passed the calculator. Yeah, yeah. And you can just behind the you can just behind the dead Genosian prototype, you can see a damage card on a Howard Charles. So I know I have taken damage. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. It, but to be fair, <clears throat> probably should be dead. Probably shouldn't have just had to spend the calculate to live. Probably shouldn't have punched however much damage into Poe I did. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. But, you know, sometimes uh, it's the little droids that could. Yeah, 9 6 to me, because Chris scores an objective and I score another couple of objectives. Because I've got the center, I've got the far left one, and I've got cr the Chris's right one. Yeah. Uh, and Pam's in trouble. Yeah. Um, I did keep the calculator on Cad Bane with Kraken, so happy days. Uh, and then I just start consolidating my vultures. I Basically, I'm like, okay, my condition is if I can kill Poe and Pam, I've got this. We can ignore Ray for the minute. DFS311 turns onto a rock and calculates. He's now contesting the objective. Uh, one of my, my other Howard Child on the Rock rotates to face where Poe is and calculates. Uh, one of my trade feds does a two straight in front of Pam and calculates. No, no, target locks Pam, actually, because I've already got to calculate. Uh, my lucky as heck Howard Child just does a one hard in front of Poe and calculates. 
uh, my last vulture has two hards to where I I thought Ray might try to three bank into the middle, so I'm trying to block that, and I calculate, and the Geonosian prototype stops. Because, again, I'm trying to make it tricky for Ray to just go straight over the rock and start getting value. Because in my head, Ray needs to start throwing hammers and picking up droids. Yeah. So if I can just prevent her from getting mods as much as possible, all the, much be all the better. Pam does a one bank to clear the stress and takes a focus. Uh, Cad Bane does a two talon behind Pam and gets a stress. I mean that's a lovely call. Did did you consider the fact he might have layered another reverse? Yes, but I also thought that if he's layering Pam, that means the stressed Poe and the stressed Ray are not doing much. I mean that's fair. My, see, my take on that is yeah. Ray, Ray can deal with being stressed. Yeah, and Poe at that point, I think <laughs> probably just dials yeah. in a three straight. But yeah. That was my thought. I was like, I think Chris is going to want to do things with Ray and Poe, or maybe even save the force for her, him, himself. So I was like, okay, we'll talent roll Cad Bane. If Pam is gone, fine, I still have the objective, and Pam probably can't kill Cad. That's fair. So Ray does a three bank skating just around that um, cloud, uh, layers to make it blue. And takes target lock on the poor <laughs> vulture sitting in front of her. Yeah. Uh, Poe does a three straight, uh, kills my probe droid by landing on it. And I can't remember what action Poe does. Oh, I remember. This is where Chris was having an eye between a lock and a focus. Yeah, it's like, I think which, so. Whichever one you pick, you'll need the other one. And he does take the focus. It takes the focus. <clears throat> and I think, does it? Yeah, he, uh, po he commanded for a lock. He commanded well. pose for a lock. Yeah. All right, so at the start of engagement, I try I pass DFS's calculate to the vulture in front of Ray because he's going to need all the help he can get. Uh, and Poe shoots into my vulture droid on the rock. Uh, who takes the damage? Yeah, and kills it, because it's only got one health. Yep. Cad Bane trigger. Or do I forget? Maybe I forget. Ooh, I forgot! Why do I feel... What number... No, no, I target I was lock gonna say, there's, I was, a target, I was, there's a target lock on I was about Cad. to say what number is Cad, because... Yeah. He's number eight. Uh, so then Ray, I believe... I'm pretty sure Ray one-taps the vulture in front of her. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she does. So, you know, all of a sudden, two vultures down. Like, I'm like, I think I've got this, but if Poe doesn't die, this is going to get dicey very quickly. Well, yeah, and you've only got the gunship shooting Poe, right? So, yeah. And in my head, I'm like, okay, yeah, then uh, someone shoots Pam. Yeah, this is Cad shooting into Pam. I put two crits into her because Pam can't use that focus token on defense. I can't remember what the crits are. I think it was Fuel Leak. Yeah, I was going to say, you've done three else. damage, so I'm guessing one was a fuel leak. Uh, loose stabilizer, that's what it was. Uh, looks like Pan's shot did nothing. Yeah, Pam didn't do anything. Uh, my gunship shoots into Poe. I end up with hit crit after the reroll and calculate. Oh, this was the heroic blank into blanks, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, hang on, he must have had no, one. There, is one, there was yeah. one evade. So Poe then takes a weapons failure, he's down to one. And then I have my last shot into Pam from a range one from a vulture, target lock calculate, I end up with three hits, and Pam goes down. So I'm 13-10 on kills, and I'm holding, I believe, three objectives. Because DFS has the bottom one, Cad and the vulture have the other bottom one, and that vulture is just... No, not in range for the one on the far left. So 15-12 to me. Poe's on one health, and Poe is worth five points. The target has been acquired. Yeah. Kill, kill Poe. Because literally, if Ray and Poe kill a ship first... Yeah. The maximum they can score is six points and puts Chris on 18. If you can kill yeah. Poe, jobs are good. Yeah. But 
that, that's it for butts. But, but the problem is, Chris, 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 Chris isn't really in a position to be able to sort of just scarper and claim points because he'll lose that way as well. So yeah. he's got to kill things without losing Poe, and that is tricky. Yeah, I mean, I would argue at this point, it's it's dice like because because the, the thing is cad's proton cannon is back by now and a cad one bank points the proton cannon where yeah Poe yeah would want to go to fight cad i'd i'd be turning Poe away and going after 311 i think yeah would be my take i wouldn't want him near that proton cannon i believe i win i can't remember the road is sort of irrelevant this game uh but so dfs rotates 90 degrees to face uh the rest of the battlefield and calculates my lone Howard Charles does a one hard to the left, facing down where Ray and Poe should go and calculates. My last remaining um, Vault Trade Federation does a one hard to the right, again facing where I think Poe is going to go and calculates. He's also sitting on the objective quite happily. And the gunship... No, sorry, I barrel, roll, I barrel roll into a calculate, but the barrel roll fails. Yeah, so, so that's looking kind of tight yeah. if you've one bank cat. Yeah, that's hence the why the barrel roll yeah. was suddenly going to happen. Uh, my gunship does a too hard side slip and calculates. Or do I barrel roll here? I feel like I could just calculate. Oh, I barrel roll to the left, trying to block Ray's too hard to the left in case Ray or trying to get out. Trying, um, yeah, I try to block Ray getting out and just picking up some random objectives. Cad does a one bank to the left. It does just fit, uh, and I believe I focus. Ray does a two straight, and then I'm sad I barrel rolled. Fair. But my gunship's not getting shot, which is also something. Oh, no, that's what it was. The gunship is now in range of the far left objective. That's what that's what the barrel roll was for, because I was like, yeah. I'm still thinking, if I just need a couple more points, and I can clinch this, because DFS is relatively safe. CAD's area is relatively safe. So if I can get three points this round, gunship goes straight, grabs my home objective. DFS get yeah, that's, yeah. that's where I'm, that's that's where I'm at. And I can't remember what Ray does. I think Ray takes the target lock. Yeah, Ray takes the target lock onto CAD, and then Poe does a three straight. Because uh, uh. Poe takes the damage there. Like, you d yeah, so three straight directly in front of CAD, and is umming and ahhing on the focus. Probably Picks a target lock instead. So here's so this is where basically this is the thinking behind Chris's thing, is the focus cannot keep him alive against Cad. Yeah. So what he needs is for Cad to literally keep. He says, "I need to get all hits, and you need to get all blanks, and then Cad will die, and then maybe I've got something." Yeah. But um, I th I think in all honesty, going in to try and get seven damage through on a rogue class in one round. Is not likely it's with a weapons not... failure to Poe and yeah. Ray like... and Rage 2. Like, it, you know what? I didn't really clock it. Like, I think had Poe done a too hard to the right, has gone after DFS. Well, that's that why I'm like, that is yeah. where I would have turned away. I mean, hindsight's a great thing. We all know, we <laughs> yeah. all know it's easier to sit here and uh, talk about it afterwards. But it's... Yeah, cause especially because I thought Poe was going straight because I was like, well, he's going to try and kill Cad and the, the Vulture because Ray can't really go anywhere else and he needs he needs to pick up ships. He does, but I think if he picked up a vulture this round and then a vulture yeah. next round, and then it's yeah, I can see that. Uh, other interesting thing of note is DFS three eleven uh, still has a shell. Oh, and has a yeah. It's gonna be the it doesn't. It, <laughs> no, yeah, it, it doesn't come down to it, but because yeah, so basically, Poe and Ray shoot into Cad, <clears throat> and they don't kill Cad. I don't think you, they do barely anything, right? Yeah, they, they, they. Poe doesn't. Poe does no damage. I still have full shields. I think, yeah. And then Ray does put four damage into me, and I take like three. Um, but yeah, that's it. Cad, Cad shoots Poe. I get hit, hit crit, and Poe dies, and that's it. Uh, we basically stop there, <laughs> like. 
there was some talk of like, do I do I not shoot at Poe the entire time and let DFS try for it? I'm like, hell no, because no, if I do that, I'll miss, and then the game will go on, and I might lose. Yeah, so yeah. no, Cad no, is shooting Poe. You're you're in a final. You close it out while you can. Yeah. Um, with Poe dying, I get three more points from the objectives I'm holding. Uh, Chris gets one from the center, and it's twenty three to twelve in the end. Yeah. Or no, twenty three thirteen. I think it was. I think we just didn't update Chris's point. Or Fair. Something like that. And that was it. Uh, I got it. Yeah. Congratulations. And so the interesting thing about this game for me is that I basically never shot Ray. Like, I think, Ray, you either have to get in early on. Yeah. Or just ignore. Yeah. And I'm trying to work it out because Ray has compassion. I'm thinking, I can't remember what the last cards that went into Poe were, but. And I don't think Poe could have been saved. Fair. I'm looking, there's no pilot crits going out, are there? No, I just see the weapons failure. Yeah, and you pump more than enough to on the last shot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was just trying to think because looking because because Ray is right there and I've done no damage and Ray with compassion after I've not been shooting her at all, that would have made things interesting. But I, but I look I had to look up compassion, um because I was like, um, because in my game against Mark Packer Hughes, I killed Chewbacca because stunned pilot put Ch were going through the gas cloud killed Chewbacca. And a comment was posted saying that ah, oh, Ray could have used compassion to save Chewbacca. No, he no Ray couldn't have because you need to be dealt a face up pilot or crew damage card, and stun pilot didn't do that. No, but she could have compassioned the stunned pilot. No, because not range two. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's that's what that's what I was thinking. I think, you know, I think that's what the thing is because it was. Because when Ray, well, basically when when the Chewbacca, in that game when the Chewbacca was going over the cloud, he was going to be right next to Ray, uh, and it was like, oh, you could have compassioned the damage and saved Chewbacca. And I just looked up compassion. No, you can't because you ha it has to be pilot crits. Yeah. Oh, right, sorry. Because obviously you guys yeah. talked about that. I assumed you were talking about the actual stunned pilot yeah, itself. No. At the time I put it on, I'm pr I'm positive that Chewie was beyond range two of Ray. I mean, I could be wrong, and I could be misremembering. <laughs> But I know I I remember Chewie triggering Lone Wolf, so. Oh, right. I mean that seems. <laughs> I feel like that I'm seems positive. Legit. I'm, po I'm positive he must have been further away from Ray. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but that's the end. Yeah, I kill Poe. I get some objectives. It's twenty three to twelve. I still have one, two, three, four. I still have five ships on the board, and I think that that's also what comes down to it. Like some of my ship, like the Howard Child that's still left alive, probably shouldn't be. That's fair. Um, but that's vultures, man. Yeah, yeah. They either whimper and die, or they live forever. Yeah, because I guess it's the same thing, isn't it? Like when Poe, Poe, this game shot range two, obstructed into a vulture, and the vulture took three damage and died straight away. Like it's just the duality of network calculation and two agility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like the list. I like Cad Bane. Cad Bane is a very solid four point ship. Oh, that's a um, stick him on and give him a spin. Vultures are nice and good. I think the Geon Ocean prototypes can take a little bit too much for their price point. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess honestly, I maybe in a separate a three point um, tactical relay carrier shouldn't be able to take the tactical relay and, and a big gun. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, a four-point tactical relay carrier, fine. You know what, let Wat Tambor have the stuff, right? He's a four-point ship, you're taking a tactical relay, let him have the stuff. A four-point gunship with a tactical relay, cool. Have a tactical relay, have have a, have cannons and missiles. I think that's fine. I'm spending four points. Three points, I think it should be tactical relay or... and nothing else. Yeah. Or I'm taking a bad tactical relay. Like, I think I should be allowed to take TV-94 and shells, for example. So, you know, if I should, sh that's the someone I, dies, right? No, no, that's the if I do an attack and you're in my bullseye and I'm rolling two dice, oh. I can spend a calculate to add a hit. Yeah, fair. I think I should be allowed to take that in shells. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, I mean that's fair. <laughs> like they don't work together, and unless you happen to pick up a weapons failure, um, and yeah, I think that's fair for having those two. But yeah, no, I I'd agree with you. 
Uh, but that's just me. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, ha- I, I had two. I would the, argue. I yeah. had I had literally the exact same Geonosians in my list, and they're good. Very good for their yeah. price point. Well, uh, I mean, it's just the, the old thing, isn't it? Like, even in um, under current AMG points, which gun chips do you bring? Oh, you bring the two 3.1s, because three points for eight hull and stuff is good. It, it's it's funny, because I, <laughs> I, I looked through Septus at AMG, um, thinking about Hemel, and I was like, maybe I'll just take some fun. And I just looked at it and went, God, it's so bad compared to Dex WA. Like, so bad. Yeah. Ugh. Like it's it's so bad, but it's like uh, I think in XWA it's also so close to greatness. Like I actually do legitimately like Separatist is almost if if if, if sorry in AMG yeah Separatist is almost there. It just it just needs time to be tweaked. Yeah, because you can still do solid stuff. Um, it just is. Under, it's just subpar. Like it's still it's solid but subpar. Like the the rogues in AMG are still fine. Like is anyone going to really say that Dirge is a bad ship? No, no, of course not. Um, but it's just like not you know you're not quite all there. Like you have a few good things and then you're fi- yeah then you're using filler right. Yeah. Um, but I'm not here to bang on about AMG points. <laughs> I mean AMG isn't going to be banging on about them much longer anyway, so. No, no, that is fair. Um, although, the likelihood is the next couple of weeks of podcasts, we might actually, well, I certainly will be flying AMG points because I'm going up to Hemel Hampstead for the yeah. most northern southern GT. Yeah, um, boy. Whereas I believe you're disappearing off to play unnamed game systems. I'm disappearing off to play Shatterpoint. Ho ho ho! Don't don't mention that. We'll get shut down by the AMG haters. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> like that's fair. Hate AMG or you like what they did for X Wing? They do make good games. Yeah, I, I, I play, just didn't like X Wing. I, mean, I, I play Shatterpoint <laughs> as well. I think it's a thoroughly enjoyable yeah. game. Yeah, they just didn't like X Wing. I uh, can't yeah. be helped. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's fine because we're still playing it. It's moved on. Exactly. Well, no, we will wrap it up for this evening. Uh, we'll be back next week with, with I'm something. not sure what. Possibly some more from Nationals. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, if not, because yeah, there's definitely a few interesting games to look at. Uh, heck, if we can get the semi-finals, that'd be good. Because I, I didn't get to see anything of yours except the very end, where you were ro- doing a road roll off to see who won. So. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried. I'll try again, but we'll see. Um, but if not, we'll have a game that Sam and I have played. So, yes. Right. On that note, I'll say see you guys next week. Yeah. Ta ta.